Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today we'll be talking about how to run a sub-17 5k. Now this is a barrier that means quite a lot in my running career so far because it took so many attempts to get there and I'm sure that anyone watching this will definitely be able to achieve it as long as they put the work in and are patient because one thing I'll talk about and reiterate a lot in this video is how long of a process it takes to actually build the base fitness in order to get to around a 17 minute 5k level. So don't rush it and just enjoy the process because if you don't enjoy the journey you're definitely not gonna get to the destination because like the journey is what's gonna take up majority of your time and the destination isn't really even a destination because once you break the 17 minute barrier you're gonna be focused on the next goal immediately because when I broke 17 for the first time I was already focused on sub 16 and here I am running a 15 mid 5k now and I'm still you know, carrying on, I'm focused on the next barrier, which is now the 15 minute barrier. It will take a while to get there, but I'm not fussed how long it takes because I'm enjoying every step of the way because it's not something that happens overnight. So to run a sub 17 minute 5K, you need to average a pace of 323 point something per kilometer. And another thing to know is that 93% of the energy system that you use when you're running a 5K is the aerobic energy system. So that being said, a lot of the focus will be on building a big volume or base in order to be able to run a sub 17 minute 5k which is why I was talking about how it doesn't happen overnight you literally need to layer years and years of work of just jogging in order to get the base fitness to be able to run that sort of time and then on top of that you need to develop the speed so in this video the three main parts that we're going to talk about are easy runs and then intervals and then tempos those are the three kind of pillars that you have to focus on in order to run a good 5k so the first part we're going to talk about is easy running and building our base. So doing a lot of jogs at a conversational pace will increase our aerobic base. And that's like what you want to do majority of the time with your training. 80% of your training should be pretty easy. And there's a lot of benefits that come with aerobic base training, which is increased capillarization, meaning there's more capillaries in your legs to absorb more oxygen to the muscles. There's also increased mitochondria in your muscle fibers. So you're able to produce more energy. You'll also have more glycogen and fat storage which will help with enduring sports as well, like running. On top of that, you're gonna have like way better efficiency of transportation of oxygen. You'll have like a lower blood viscosity, meaning the blood is more watery. So it's easier for the blood to travel around the body. And you're gonna have a higher stroke volume, which is how much blood is pumped per beat of the heart. And therefore your cardiac output will increase as well because of that. The next section we're going to talk about is interval training. A lot of people know me for being really focused on tempo runs and that's mainly because I do events that are longer than 5k now. I'm more focused on the half marathon and ultra marathons as well. But the key point I want to drive for this section for the 5k training tips is that your 5k pace is way quicker than your threshold pace. In my best shape ever, I think my threshold pace was around 318 or 319 per kilometer, but my 5k race pace was 307. So I think it's really important to be able to you know, have that extra gear on top of that lactate threshold pace, which I currently definitely don't have. Anything faster than tempo just feels like a sprint to me at the moment, which feels really crap. And therefore I'm not in very good 5k shape. So the important thing I wanna talk about right now is that we wanna make our 5k pace feel as efficient as possible. And the only way to make that feel efficient is if our technique is very efficient when we're running quicker than that. So if we train a lot at our 1503 k pace, we can fall back to that 5k pace with more efficiency. If I'm really, really comfortable at running like 250 pace with good form, 307 per k is gonna feel very, very natural and way more smooth to me. Whereas if I'm only doing tempo running and easy running, I'll feel like I have to increase the gear and then try and maintain good form even though I'm struggling really hard, which is a lot tougher of a way to run a 5k. So the final section of this video is talking about tempo runs. And you know, there's no video on my channel where I don't talk about tempo runs because I love it so much. It just feels so good running at a comfortable but fast pace that you can hold for such a long time. Because I love running and the longer I can do it for, the more fun it is. I think intervals aren't as fun for me because I'm struggling a little more. It ends a lot quicker. My tempos are my absolute favorite. Everyone knows that. I love my 30K tempos. I love my 50K tempos, which I've done in the past before. But yeah, let's not blabber on too much about tempos because you already know I love it. The key thing about tempo runs is that everyone focuses on their top end speed and their aerobic base, but they don't realize that there's another speed in the middle that's really significant in training. Because if you increase your 
tempo pace or your threshold pace, you're able to run at a faster pace without feeling the jelly feeling in your legs for like a longer period of time. So lactate threshold pace is the pace that you can roughly hold for about an hour. Obviously it's more beneficial if you measure it in a lab and get the actual blood lactate levels. And if we train at that intensity for longer in our training, you're gonna get better at running that faster pace for a long period of time. And therefore it can be beneficial. There is a correlation between having a faster lactate threshold pace and how good you are of a runner. So any event from the 1500 all the way up to ultra marathons for those crazy people who do that will benefit from a good lactate threshold pace. So yeah, it's a good indicator of how good you are as a runner and therefore it's gonna be good to train a lot of it. A good way to work out what lactate threshold is, is by trying to work out that fine line where if you go faster by just five seconds per kilometer, you're suddenly gonna feel a lot tougher. And then if you go five seconds slower per K, you're gonna feel like it's pretty easy and you can hold it for like an hour or whatever. So it's a very fine line. You're suddenly gonna feel tougher if you go a little bit too much above it. But it is sometimes good to train a little bit above that because you will eventually push that curve and be able to run it a bit quicker without producing excess lactic acid. I am kind of blabbering on here, but I think long story short, just work at that comfortable but uncomfortable intensity and do like different workouts, three by six minutes, four by eight minutes eventually, because then you're doing more tempo work over time. You can even do six by a K at threshold as well, with like shorter breaks as well, like 30 second jog or 60 second jog. And yeah, just play around. There's plenty of threshold workouts that you can find on the internet and do it yourself. But changing it every week will help you out with that. But yeah, that's as far as I'll go to in terms of tempo and threshold in this video. I'll make a whole other video on it in the future. Before we wrap up this video, I want to conclude by giving three more extra bonus tips. And the first one is again, to be really patient because it will take time. It's not going to happen overnight. I really want to make that point clear because I don't want people to obsess over time. Running is way more fun when you literally enjoy the process. The second bonus tip is to not think about running as a linear progression. You're always gonna go up and down, up and down. Like the amount of times I've been up and down is actually insane because of the random niggles you get occasionally and then you have to take a few rest days and then you have to build back that fitness. The third bonus tip that I wanna give is that all the one percenters start to matter when you are running a 17 minute 5K or under. Diet, sleep, all those factors they're gonna have like tiny incremental benefits, but when you are running like a 16.55K, every second matters. And if you get like even 1% better sleep, you're gonna run a few seconds faster. And every second is like so much more worth when you're running at that sort of level. So definitely pay attention to all that sort of stuff. Even stuff like rotating your shoes. If you're training more in fresh pairs of shoes that aren't completely dead and have a thousand Ks in them, you're gonna be able to run more without getting injured and that little bit of extra base that you get from that little bit of extra mileage is going to help with your 5k time so think about all the one percenters do everything right and train like a professional athlete and then you will see the results that's about it for this video thank you for watching leave a like if it helped you comment below if you have any other questions and i'll answer them in another video